Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings, and I'm going to take you on a tour of the full landscape here at the greenhouse. There's always work to be done, but I think that we really have pretty much everything planted that was a planned planting, but we'll always, of course, stick a few little things in here and there as we see spots. But where we're going to start off is right here in the middle of the parking lot, and um, I want to talk to you about some of the different plants that we have planted here in these islands. So this year, um, what we have here is, of course, we have these are the bobo hydrangeas, and these have been here probably now for six or so years, and they get a light trimming in the fall and kind of shaped up a little bit. But in the island here, these are about three foot tall and three foot wide. They'll start blooming probably end of July, beginning of August, so this will give us some uh, color later on in the season. But we wanted to have that impact of color, and what we did is we planted some annuals between the bobo hydrangeas. So the vistas here, this is the mini vista hot pink supertunia, and we did mass planting of those, and those will eventually fill in this whole area so that we won't even see any of the wood chips. And then in the center, we planted some of the verbena meteor showers. And the thought was with these uh, meteor showers is that they're tall, they're kind of whimsy, and they're gonna attract butterflies. And we really wanna create kind of a butterfly oasis here in a lot of our gardens. So a lot of the plants that we planted are very intentional to attract the butterflies. Now on the end of each of these, so we have two islands, on the end of each of them, we put some of the Sangria Charm Supertunia, or Mini Vista Sangria, the name's been changed. Uh, and this is more of a deep magenta color. Again, that small flower that the Mini Vistas have, but the great mounding habit that does well out in the landscape. So that's what we have here in both of our island parking lots. Let's head over to the Butterfly Garden. We're out in the Butterfly Garden, and this garden was just built last spring, so spring of 2020. And last year, basically what we did is we didn't really have a plan in place for this garden, so we just loaded it up with a bunch of annuals, and it looked really pretty. But we really wanted to be a little bit more, we wanted to put more thought into it, and we really wanted to create this to be a butterfly oasis. So let's take a look at some of the plants that were just planted this spring. So we have a nice path that kind of walks up and through this garden. So as customers or visitors want to come, they can walk through the garden and get in the middle of it and see some of the things that are planted. So we'll kind of stop right here and talk about some of the things that are lining the front of this garden. So to start with, we have some of the Lobularia Snow Princess. That's that beautiful white Lobularia, and that really is going to create a mat of color. The thing we like about the Lobularia is that it blooms all summer long. It looks like a lissom, but it does not go to seed. Its main job is to just produce flowers all summer long. We've also planted some of the coleus. This is a Golden Dreams coleus, and that's a nice foliage plant. So that will um, get a little bit taller. We have a few white sun patients tucked in as well, along with the Royal, or this is actually the uh, Mini Vista Indigo Charm Supertunias. And then we have some of the Vista Paradise, which is a hot pink petunia. So kind of mixed in throughout these plants, we put some perennials as well because we wanted to have some staple plants out in this garden. So some of the things that we have planted in the same little space here are lupin. There are some of the um, spring, bling, spring bling flocks, so that's early color. We have some dianthus, uh, paint the town red, which will be kind of a nice mounding and fill out type plant. And then it looks like there is some butterfly bush as well more columbine and a few of the uh, Rebecca gold star which will give us color later on in the season as we look at this side of the garden we have all supertunias lining the back there those were all trimmed before they got planted so they're all looking like little green mounds right now but that's just going to be a mass of bright pink as the summer goes on we started the bed off with some of the sedum lemon coral and then kind of spattered through it here, we've got a mix of perennials and shrubs. So I'm seeing some coneflower, some penstemon fireworks grass. That's that beautiful red foliage grass. We have some hydrangeas. So this one right here in front is the little quick fire that will give us some summer color. There's lupin, daylilies, coneflowers, 
we planted some poppies in this garden, which is kind of a first. None of the gardens have poppies in them. And then we have a hardy hibiscus that is um, just starting to emerge here. It's got the beautiful dark black foliage. And I'm not sure what color the blooms will be on this. I'm thinking they might be red. So we'll see as the summer goes along. But that's going to be a beautiful specimen. And then this is a butterfly garden. So we wanted to also have the Asclepius or milkweed in this garden. So we planted some of the perennial and annual milkweed. So the annual milkweed is really nice. It gets tall and it blooms virtually all summer long. Where the perennial will bloom for kind of a season. I say a season, meaning like maybe a month and then it will go to its seed pod. So I want to just have different species of the Asclepius for the monarch butterflies. We have this um, tree here that we just planted. And the thing that's really nice is a birch tree. It's got this beautiful kind of textured foliage on it. And it's white, white stems. There's, a, there's four of them there. So it's kind of a grouping just to give that nice wispy airy feeling. So, and that's really given us the structure to this garden and along with some height. Around the tree, we planted some of the strong box holly. So that is going to be an evergreen, just very compact. And as that fills out, it'll create kind of a little hedge behind the tree that will, I don't know, just kind of give it a neat look here in the winter. Also, when we were planting up this garden, I wanted to have a lot of winter interest as well because a lot of my gardens I don't have winter interest in and I like to cut things for making my winter pots and stuff. So down along the front here of the berm, we planted the Arctic Fire Dogwood along with the Arctic Sun Dogwood. So that will give me red and yellow twigs when I'm ready to trim them here in the winter. Uh, so if you look closely here at this Arctic Fire, you can kind of see the red twigs just starting to kind of show. One thing I do want to point out with these dogwoods, if you have them in your garden and you're like mine, they used to be red, now they're kind of brown. This is a shrub that you want to trim every about two or three years because it's the fresh new growth that's going to give you that beautiful red, uh, the red twigs or yellow twigs if you're looking at the yellow twig dogwoods. So don't be afraid to trim your dogwoods because that's what's going to give you that fresh, clean, bright foliage, um, uh, not foliage, but stems. We also have here another hibiscus that's coming back nicely. And I want to say we'd probably cut this in half and split it and put it in two, two locations. So I think they're going to be actually be the same plant. Along the front of the berm, we continued going with the Vista Supertunias all along the back. So we're going to have a mass of Paradise and Bubblegum all mixed together. So that will look really pretty once they start blooming. I see there's a lot more Asclepias that have been tucked in on the back side here as well for the butterflies. A grouping of Daylilies. And then you'll notice at the top here of the berm, we did a mass planting of the pugster butterfly bush. So one thing I really want to point out is these blooms on the pugsters are huge. We have the amethyst, the pinker, and then the blue. So we did groupings of three of each of those plants. So that really creates quite an eye-catching look to the top here on this berm. In front of the pugster butterfly bush, actually, let's take a look here. This is the now pinker. The beautiful pink blooms. Let's go in and take a closer look here at the amethyst as well. Beautiful light pink blooms and just look at the size of those. They are absolutely huge. And the thing is, is the blooms are huge, but these flowers are these, these shrubs. They only get two foot tall. So they're a small shrub with a big bloom presence. In front of the pugsters, we planted some more coneflower some tall garden flocks because I wanted to make for sure that we'd have color mid and late summer as well. And then we did tuck in a couple liatris as well because that's a great plant for the butterflies. Other things to point out in this garden are we have an atlas rose, which is a beautiful, beautiful orangey peach rose. And that has done really well. We had that in another garden, and when we dug that garden out, we transferred it into this garden here. And if you can see, it's just starting to bud up. And this will be just loaded with flowers once it gets a little bit um, warmer. We also planted a proud berry. If you've watched any of my other YouTube videos, there is 
videos on the proud berry bushes and I love the pink berries that happen in the fall and in the winter. So the proud berry is just really a small shrub right now. Not a lot of interest going on with it, but once we get to this fall and in the winter, that's gonna have nice clusters of bright pink berries. We have some little dwarf lilacs planted in here. These are the bloomerang dwarf pink butter, uh, pink lilac bushes. And they're gonna only get about two foot tall and two foot wide, maybe three foot. But that again is gonna give us some really nice spring color. We have kind of another anchor plant on the top of the island and that's the bloomerang dark purple. And that plant is pretty old. We transferred it from another garden into this garden to have a really nice mature spring color. But that was beautiful about a month ago when that was blooming with its dark purple blooms. As we head down and around through this island here, we have some Nephophia. So those are the um, Rocket's Red Glare. I actually, I think we did three different ones. So that's gonna be three different looking Nephophia or Red Hot Pokers. We did a couple of the Caryopteris Beyond Midnight. So in the fall, when I'm out at the trial garden and this is blooming, this is the most amazing bright blue bloom. So I have a video on this as well if you want to check out the Beyond Midnight Caryopteris. But that's great fall color and it's a nice pollinator plant for the native bees and such as well. We did put a dill in the garden thinking of maybe black swallowtails would come and visit. So that's a great host plant for the black swallowtails. Uh, they lay their eggs on that and then the, the caterpillars eat that. As we head around the front of this bed, there's just so many fun goodies in here. Um, we did a lot of the compact hydrangeas, so the Invincible series. We did Mini Mauvette, Wee White, and then Invincible Ruby. So Ruby will get about three foot tall, Mini Mauvette and Wee White. Those are only about a two foot tall variety. So very compact and they're gonna look really nice in this area, not being too overwhelming, but just, just a perfect little size. Also in this bed, we planted a couple Stokesia. So those are gonna be really pretty purple flowers when they start blooming. They're a really long blooming perennial. So I wanted to add those into the garden, just something that you don't always see everywhere. Some of the other shrubs that we have planted, we did a couple of the candy corn spirea, which is that yellow with the orange tip. And that's a great foliage plant. It also flowers, but I really did that mostly for the foliage just to have that bright pop of color. We did a couple of the firelight tidbit hydrangeas. They're only about a two foot tall hardy hydrangea. And those are going to be blooming mid to late summer. A great, nice big flower but in a very small package of a hydrangea plant and then as we head back up to the front of the bed we have some more groupings of daylilies here some of the proven winter ones this is a beautiful one blooming right now this is the storm shelter daylily look at that beautiful bloom really large thick a lot of substance to that flower a few other things to point out as we look across the front of this butterfly bed is we have we have some salvia. This is the unplugged so blue variety. I planted a couple of the onyx and pearls penstemon because that's really great foliage and the flower color is amazing once that starts to bloom in the garden. And then we also tucked a couple of the Amsonia storm cloud in just to add again some more spring color that has a lot of that really wow factor to it. So let's step back and kind of take have you see the view of the full garden. I know we've been up close and personal in here uh, but I think it's always fun too to just see what does the garden look like from a distance where you can just get the full picture of everything that's going on. So this is a pretty big garden and our intention was is we wanted it to be a nice walk through garden for people to walk through as they come and visit. A lot of different colors in here, annuals, perennials and shrubs. And I think it's really, it's a nice display garden if people wanna see some of the different proven winter varieties in bloom. So in our island bed here around our sign, as you pull into the garden center, we have kind of a mass planting going on. There's only four different varieties that we've used in this bed. And we really wanted to just have it be not too overstimulating, but a lot of just 
of the same color that pops out. So typically what we do is we'll align the edge of this bed with all the same thing, but this year we kind of notched out the little, the little edges here. So what we did is we took the lemon coral sedum, bumped it up, and made a little pocket here. So in this pocket we planted the grape lantana, which is kind of a mounding, ground covering, trailing type of lantana, and the grape just smells amazing. So the name is very appropriate because these little flowers, they smell like grapes. So it's one of my favorite lantanas. Uh, in addition to the lemon coral sedum, we have the sun, we did a lot with sun patients this year. We have the compact deep rose and the compact purple. And we alternated those every other throughout this island. I wanted to kind of have, I wanted it to be mass, but I didn't want it to be just so solid. So I think by mixing these two colors together, I'm kind of looking for that. I'm going to call it a polka dot look. That's probably not a good way of saying it, but just kind of a nice mix of colors that complement each other and that are really set off by that bright yellow there of that lemon coral sedum. Right now we are in front of our waterfall planting bed and this is a huge planting area. And what we've done in this area in the past is it's been a lot of repetitive with the flowers we did a lot of the same and it looked gorgeous because it was like three things lots of color but this year we wanted to shake it up a little bit and add a few extra things in here and just create kind of more of a diversified look in the gardens so let's take a look at what we have planted here so along the front of the bed we lined it here with sun patients and one thing I want to point out is we planted all this and got a little bit greedy and we got frost on Memorial Day weekend. And you can definitely tell on the sun patients that they have been affected by frost. We're not worried because they're gonna reflush out and look good, but right now they look a little bit sad or burnt, but that's actually frost damage that we're seeing on some of these plants here. So we lined the front with the sun patients. Behind them, we did the fireworks grass. So that's gonna get really beautiful red looking with the blades. And behind those are the going banana daylilies with the uh, um, butterfly bush, the lo and behold blue chip behind it. So this garden is kind of layered up with different colors. So that will look really pretty as that starts to bloom. As we head along, we have some of the uh, salvia out back, some of the purple salvia that's looking really stunning with that beautiful purple clematis. So that is only one plant in there and it is just really filling up that arbor nicely. So in this front little area here, this is where we created little pockets of color. We lined the front with artist blue argiratum, which you can also see got hit by the frost, uh, but it's starting to refill out. We did some of the Golden Dreams coleus for great foliage color. Unplugged so blue salvia, which is giving us kind of a little bit of a thriller look. And then up front here, we have the double up white begonias and a couple of the surefire rose begonias. And then along the back, that's lined in Nepeta cat's meow. So this is kind of a little cluster of a lot of different colors. So we're really excited to see how this turns out as the summer goes along. As we head up towards the waterfall, we lined both sides of the waterfall with the neon pink sun patience. Along the top of the waterfall, we have the beautiful sun credible sunflowers and those are going to continue to get about probably about three foot tall by the end of the season and just loaded with blooms. It's such a wonderful backdrop to this waterfall area. And then in the center between the two waterfalls we did the Lobel area snow princess and then we took all the different components that we've used in the different areas in the garden. So the coleus, golden dreams, the surefire rose begonias, the double up white begonias, the unplugged so blue salvia and then up in the front there is the artist blue argiratum. So that's really creating quite a mixture of colors. As we head down and around the island here, we have one pond that obviously is very clean and neat looking and then we have another one that we've left just a little bit more natural. It's kind of gross looking. Uh, but it's really fun because there's a lot of tadpoles and frogs and stuff that live in this little pond. So it just kind of adds a little bit of that natural element into our very nicely landscape element. 
We have the spirea up front here. So these will be blooming probably within the next three weeks or so. And I believe these are the um, Big Bang. Beautiful foliage and beautiful flower. We lined in front of those with the surefire rose begonias. Just tucked behind the spirea, we have the Wajila wine and roses, and that's just starting to come out of bloom right now. But that's got really great deep dark foliage, so that looks nice up against that chartreuse green here of the Wajila. And then we do have a really large pocket behind here that needs to get planted at some point. Um, but we were battling thistle for many years in that area. So we didn't really want to plant in that area until we knew that we had kind of overcome our thistle issue. And it's looking really clean right now. So it's probably time that we can go ahead and get some things planted back into that area. Now when we do so, we're going to have to kind of think of height because a lot of these things up front are going to cover anything small that would go in that area. So we'll have to try to find some of the bigger, taller shrubs that we can plant back there that will poke over top of all of the ones up front. Next we have a grouping of three of the Invincible Spirit Hydrangeas and you can just see that they are just loaded with buds. That is more of a July blooming hydrangea, but that thing is just, that is going to be just a massive color once that thing really starts to light up and show all of its true colors. So those are about four foot tall and four foot wide and they do get trimmed back in the fall a little bit. They bloom off of the new growth so they can be trimmed in the fall or in the spring. Another little grouping here of the unplugged salvia with the sun paces up front. And then we also kind of continued around this island with the spirea just to kind of keep that consistent bright gold look of color going along. We'll head to the back side in just a minute and show you what we have going on in the back side of this garden. As we head to the back side of the waterfall garden, we kind of continued the smooth hydrangea theme. We have uh, the big one here is incredible. In between it is probably invincible ruby. We planted a few perennials along the front. We have the salvia, perfusion purple, a few more of the sunflowers to kind of just give us a little bit of that whimsy height as the summer goes along. We've also tucked in the snake. Yeeks. Well, so the snake is hiding under a Daisy May lecanthemum. Oh, he's peeking through. Sorry. We're having a squirrel moment, but this is actually, oh, he's a shy guy. It's a little snake moment. Sorry. We don't find snakes here very often, and that's perfectly good with me. That's just a little gar garter snake, nothing to be scared of, but they still kind of creep you out a little bit when you come across them. Uh, so that was a Daisy May Leucanthum that's in bud. Another one of the salvias. And this, holy cow, this is like, this is a Leucanthum, but this is Becky. So it's, this is an older plant and it is absolutely huge compared to the Daisy May. Nice thing with Daisy May though is Daisy May, if we look at the buds on that plant, it is loaded with flower buds. Like just that plant is going to be a mass of color once it blooms. So when we compare that to the Lacanthemum Becky, which is an older variety, there still is plenty of blooms on the end of all the foliage, but you can just see there's a lot more foliage going on here than what there is actual flower. So Daisy May is preferred by me for sure. Beautiful bloom that's a uh, beautiful shrub blooming here in pink. This is the Sonic Bloom Pink Wajila. That's a reblooming Wajila. So usually that will bloom about three times throughout the summer. Its first bloom is always the most significant with the biggest wow factor, but its second and third bloom, they don't disappoint. I mean, there's, there's a lot of flowers. And if you can get any shrub to rebloom, that is an absolute bonus in my books. Planted next to it is an incredible blush hydrangea. So that's got nice buds starting on it. Tucked behind the blush, we can see there's a little Baptisia back there. A little purple. I think that one is called Blueberry Sunday. A few more salvia. We planted some of the um, sedum, lemon coral sedum, kind of between the different salvias for just some chartreuse green. 
This is the firelight hydrangea. So that's a hardy hydrangea and that will bloom later on in the summer. And you can see we did the lecanthemum and the salvia kind of alternated throughout this bed. Another beautiful, that's going to be, I think, the blush hydrangea. The decadence chocolate baptisia. And that's just getting to the end of its bloom cycle. A few more of the hydrangeas. This here is the tough stuff hydrangea. This is a mountain hydrangea. And so typically we don't do so great with the big leaf hydrangeas here, but I can see this tough stuff, which is a mountain hydrangea. It's more hardy. I see a lot of buds on there. So that's very promising that this is going to be blooming this year. Next to the arbor, the, the tall plant that is a fine line rominous. And we have those on both sides of this arbor uh, just to kind of give that nice columnar look. Kind of just, I don't know, frames it in really nicely, I think. And as we make our way to the other side, this is a little bit of a work in progress. So we ripped out a ton of big leaf hydrangeas over here that were not blooming. So there was a lot of bare spaces. We left a couple that were blooming and I can see this one here has buds on it. So this is why it was saved. And this one is a tough stuff. So that makes perfect sense. So this here is all dead. Like this is not going to produce anything, but you can see we didn't want to trim that because look at the end there. There's the flowers and the buds. So this can come through and get trimmed off now that we can kind of see where the flowers are going to be for the season. We've got beautiful pink truffles, Baptisia. A few more of the daisies. These aren't as old, so they're much smaller plants. Another Baptisia, Blueberry Sunday. And then lemon meringue, which is almost finished flowering. There's just a few little flowers left on it. The nice thing though with the Baptisia is when they're done flowering, they, they have kind of a nice almost shrub look to them. So they have like a nice habit in creating just that nice, beautiful green shrub, basically, even though it is a perennial. Uh, here's another one that's just kind of going out of color. This is Dutch or dark chocolate. Another lemon meringue. These were beautiful about a week ago. Cherry Jubilee. And then another firelight hydrangea for our summer color. So this garden, we did a lot of repeating with things throughout it just to kind of create some consistency so that, I mean, there's a lot going on in here, but by creating repeating things, it kind of gives a repetitive feel to it and not just a whole bunch of bleh in the garden. So this area, we do need to do a little bit more work on adding a few more things in, but it's definitely this waterfall garden is looking beautiful this year. So here we're at our parking lot garden and here are just a couple of the girls who have made all of this possible. They are the ones that are planting all these beautiful flowers and maintaining all these beds, weeding it, deadheading all the flowers and just keeping the landscape here looking beautiful. We have Catherine and Amy and then Heather. She also is out here helping. She's left for the day. Uh, but this team of three, they have done a fabulous job at keeping these gardens looking great. So along this garden here, there's a lot of annuals, perennials, and shrubs all mixed in the garden. Uh, we first last fall took our plants that we wanted to be like our anchor plants or our staple plants, which were our shrubs and some of the perennials. And now what we're doing is we're looking for spaces that we can just plunk some of the extra annuals into. Uh, so along this bed, let's talk first about the Vista. This is a brand new Vista that is a Jazzberry and that is new for 2022. So we wanted to make for sure that we included that in this garden so we could kind of trial it and see how it does because I'm sure we'll be using that in mass planting next year. We have some cone flowers and some lantana that are getting planted in along with the spring delaying phlox for some early season color. We have a bobo hydrangea in the back, pink dawn salvia, a couple lupin and columbine because that again is going to be our early season color. We have the beautiful Atlas rose in the back there that's just started to bloom. 
And then we did plant a couple of the Vista petunias in here because we know they're going to cover a lot of ground. So Vista paradise and Vista bubblegum, which you'll remember we've talked about these in some of the other plantings around the greenhouse. Uh, we also are putting in some of the brand new uh, calla lilies from Proven Winners. These are the B Mine series. And so there's four of them that we have. So we're tucking them in the garden. They're annuals, but they may come back. I, at my house, it's a zone five, but these zone seven plants have been coming back for the past few years. So we'll see. Uh, we got a butterfly bush there in the back with some meteor showers verbena. And then behind this beautiful aqua pot, we planted some of the ultraviolet phlox. We just put in a clematis arbor because we wanted to kind of give a little bit of height and I always like to mix two clematises at least per arbor depending on how uh, how big it is uh, so on that one it's diamond ball and I think it's pink mink they bloom at a little bit different time. actually it's jolly good they bloom at a little bit different time so that way if one's not blooming the other one will um, as we walk along we've got some more cone flowers in here some of the opening act flocks. We've got the beautiful Bartzilla peony. Because we wanted to attract the butterflies, we also have zinnias tucked in here and there because uh, those are a great plant for the butterflies. And of course, if you're going to attract butterflies, specifically monarchs, you can't forget the Asclepius. So we've got a lot of different colors of Asclepius in here as well. Um, this little trio in the back is the Millennium or Serendipity. I'm not sure which one they're going to end up being. Um, the Millennium and Serendipity Allium. Lost it there for a minute. <laughs> the Blushing Princess Lobularia with some of the Salvia Unplugged So Blue. You can see we've, we've repeated that through. Uh, we've got beautiful Candy Corn Spirea. mini vista indigo petunias along with some of the golden delicious salvia and let's talk aquapots since we're here in front of one so why do we have so many aquapots and why do we love them so the aquapots are self-watering planters so usually we can fill this planter up once a week and it will just continue to water itself throughout the week now it's going to depend a little bit on what plants and how many you put into it as to how often it needs to be refilled but typically most aquapots if you refill them once a week that's the sufficient amount of water to keep whatever's going in there alive every time we refill that we also put in fertilizer because we want to make for sure in addition to the water that our plants are also getting the proper uh, nutrients that they need to continue to do well here in these containers we have some of the paint the town fancy dianthus up front so that's more great uh, spring color um, and another of the be my um, calla lilies and look at the foliage on this beautiful kind of speckled foliage really pretty this is be my first love it's just starting to open up look at that beautiful pink bloom so i think that'll be kind of a fun tropical look here out in the garden some dill for the black swallowtails more escalapius we have the in the back the hydrangea i think that's going to be wee white some lupin we've got the calla uh, the this time they really are caladiums, calla lily, caladium, you know, potato, potato, although these are totally different things. But anyways, this here is bottle rocket, really beautiful foliage. Uh, we've got a pugster blue butterfly bush in the back. Heaven sent Jacob's ladder there up against the fence, so some great early spring color. We did kind of a massing of, mass planting here of five of the five of the daisy may lecanthemum so that's gonna look gorgeous once that comes into bloom and we tucked in some of that gold dust annual between so that's gonna be really pretty bringing out that beautiful yellow eye there of the lecanthemum we've got uh, invincible spirit hydrangea look at the buds on that thing that is just gonna be just so full of color once that opens up and blooms kind of repeating on this side what we did over there with the uh, Jacob's ladder the heaven sent added a couple kufia in because you know <laughs> butterflies hummingbirds kufia is going to be that hummingbird attracting plant like hummingbirds love kufia vermilionaire must have uh, let's see we got another hydrangea in there that's going to be probably the matching wee white beautiful specimen here of the hello yellow escalapius that's going to be blooming shortly 
some poppies another beautiful aqua pot here all planted up uh, we wanted to kind of repeat the look with uh, paint the town dianthus in front of this aqua pot as well we did different color because uh, I didn't want everything the same because if someone comes I want to show them different color options as we walk along more that golden dreams coleus We've got some beautiful huge specimens back there of coneflower so that'll be great late season color some lupins and some columbine again tucked in beautiful dwarf pink bloomerang lilac oh that's going to be gorgeous next summer so that only gets about two foot tall so that'll look nice up against that white fence more poppies and zinnias butterfly weed another bartzilla petunia this one here is just about finished for the season a couple blooms left but that baby's about done uh, opening act blush phlox this is going to be this is a nice mass planting and this phlox it's going to fill in this area so it is just going to be a mass of that beautiful blush pink color uh, in the back we tucked in another clematis actually two on that trellis we have still waters and pink mank so we'll see how they do there we might have to order some taller um, trellis or obelisks uh, when we go to our shows this year because really i could get that up to about eight foot tall and that plant would go all the way up so for now that's what we had so we'll let them go but we might be getting bigger ones for next year and as we kind of round out this garden we've got the pugster periwinkle there up against the fence vista bubblegum and vista fuchsia and then this area here has got like a lot of early season color. So there's a lot of lupin, a lot of columbine, monarda, beautiful monarda planted in here. Uh, we did some lantana. Looks like there's poppies, some more of the spring creeping flocks. So that will be really nice. Uh, and then in the corner here, we, it's kind of a little going to be a busy area so we got to be careful we're planting here because hoses and stuff will be here um, but we did plant this is the zuzu cherry ornamental cherry so i want to see what that does so that'll be pretty fun as well so yeah a lot of plants packed into this garden here like i was saying we got staple plants with the shrubs and perennials and we just kind of like threw a bunch of annuals in because this garden is still very it was just planted last fall in the spring so it's very uh, immature garden but we wanted to have it packed full of color this spring so there's a lot of annuals in here so we'll be sure to update you as the season goes on as to the progress of this garden and how it's looking so this garden bed here this is the front of the garden center and basically as you walk into the entrance we have we did some very simple hanging baskets just the geraniums with a grape punch super bells and then a little bit of that lasmachia creeping jenny um, these we had planted before things really warmed up so it was easy for us to just kind of pop these hanging baskets in and out as we needed to with a cold so and we knew that the geraniums would handle it if they got a little bit cold so they're just really pretty we just have to make sure we keep deadheading the geraniums because sometimes they can get a little funky if you don't deadhead uh, also in this area we lined it with aqua pots so we have four aqua pots along this whole path here and then we just did a lot of repetition just kind of start to finish and what we did is we have the angelonia super white so that's giving us kind of a thriller upright look next to it we have the mini vista indigo charm so that's adding that splash of purple and then we did some of the mystic illusion dahlias which is a beautiful dark foliage dahlia with a nice yellow flower so that also is kind of a thriller so we've got the angelonia and the dahlias that are kind of upright with the little pockets of the um, mini vista indigo in between we also have these beautiful allium bulbs which these are just about getting finished um, but these are just gorgeous with so these little whimsy they're actually pretty big size balls but this is an allium it's a bulb and once these are finished flowering those will get trimmed out so you won't see those along the path so it's a lot of purple white and yellow in this garden and then for our hanging baskets this year we did the jellyfish planters again and we did them a little different this year we did the fern with the blush pink sun patient the purple sun patient and then the dichondra silver falls which is going to trail to the ground so these have been up for probably about three weeks now and they've already put on at least a foot of growth and by the end of the summer that silver falls is going to be sweeping the porch for us just they're going to look gorgeous 
Be sure to also, if you haven't checked out our jellyfish planter YouTube video, check that out because you'll just be amazed at how those look. So hopefully you enjoyed the tour here today. There's been a lot of color, a lot of plants, and hopefully this has given you just a ton of inspiration.